Benzin. Tragalaphus uriceris uriceris, or more frequently referred to as the Western Bongo. This antelope is not well known by many people, and even fewer have seen one in the wild. Yet this is the very animal and the habitat it occupies that have inspired my dreams for nearly 20 years. The rainforests of Cameroon are ground zero for this dream turned reality, and I hope to give you just a glimpse into the magic of this adventure. Some of the most beautiful places on earth are also some of the hardest to get to. And hell, maybe that's why they're still so beautiful. My adventure begins at Chicago's O'Hare Airport, where I board a United 787 Dreamliner headed to Brussels, Belgium. After arriving in Belgium, I have a three hour layover and then another seven hour flight from Belgium to Douala, Cameroon. In Douala, I have a one hour layover in which I can't leave the airplane. Numerous people get off and several other people get back on. From here, we have a one hour flight from Douala to Yaoundé, Cameroon. After arriving in Yaoundé, I'm picked up at the airport and driven approximately one hour to the Marino Hotel in Yaoundé. So here we are, uh, about 20 years ago, I got a book called Elephant, Buffalo, and Bongo. Uh, it, uh, it was a great book talked about a guy who went to Cameroon and, and hunted on his own. He had no guide, just worked with the local people uh, to try and find animals in the middle of the jungle. This book inspired me. I, After reading it, I had to come to Cameroon. Um, always wanted to do it, never thought I'd be able to, but here we are. I am in the capital city of Cameroon uh, called Yaoundé. It took me about uh, 22 hours to get here, starting at 6 p.m. Uh, on Tuesday. I got picked up, um, and someone was waiting for me, uh, took me through security, no problems there. They got me in a vehicle, drove me here to this wonderful hotel, uh, the Marina Hotel, and uh, had some room service, and some chicken, and went to bed. Uh, they're picking me up here in about 10 minutes at 6 a.m. and we're going to drive for seven hours to the northeast of Yaoundé out into the jungle and from there uh, I'm not sure if we'll get out hunting today but we'll get situated and uh, tomorrow start out on a, on a foot safari into the jungle looking for bongo uh, which is a, is a large forest antelope about 600 pounds also for dwarf forest buffalo and uh, some, some dikers. There's several different species of dikers here. And I mean, just, I can't believe I'm here. Never thought this was gonna happen. Got a wonderful wife at home that, that, that really supported this. Uh, my kids didn't give me too much grief about leaving. And uh, here we are. I'm looking forward to getting into the jungle and seeing what it's really like.
The main camp for Safaria is not the end of the journey though. I eat dinner here, spend the night, and in the morning we drive another three hours to the village of Makuri. In Makuri, the locals have gathered several canoes for us to take upstream. So, after our three hour drive to Makuri, we get in canoes and travel five hours upstream to the remote camp that will be our home for the next couple days. In the jungle, everything is wet all the time. They recommend you bring two to three pairs of boots. The idea is you wear one for one day, your feet are soaking wet. The next day, you put your new boots on and hope that in 24 hours, your old boots are dry. They won't be. There are two different ways to hunt bongo. The first is to wait in an elevated blind called a mushan. The other, and more common, is to follow the bongo on foot. Now the jungle is so thick that it is nearly impossible to see the bongo even when you're right on top of it. So the most common way to hunt the bongo is to follow fresh tracks. You have a team of dogs with you, and the dogs are not like your typical hounds that smell the animal. The purpose of the dog is after following the bongo for sometimes miles on foot, the dogs rush in and keep it at bay. The main reason for this is so that the professional hunter can take a good look at the animal and make sure you're not shooting a female. The first animals that I saw on this trip was on day two. While walking through the forest, we heard the trees moving and there were baboons above us. Though there were probably about a dozen of them, based on the movements in the trees, I couldn't see them. I did manage to get one baby baboon on camera. Day four of bongo hunting, uh, we spent the first day traveling to our fly camp. Uh, day two, we went out hunting. It was wet. Uh, it didn't seem like the animals were around. They might have moved on because it was too wet. Um, so day three, we spent uh, even longer hunting, looking for sign, but nothing really fresh. We did come across some uh, excuse me, buffalo tracks and the trackers followed them a little bit into a savanna and they could hear the buffalo run off but there's no no safe way of getting to them um, or efficient way of even seeing them to take a shot so they decided to come back here to main camp so day four today we spent just traveling out of the fly camp so that was about uh, maybe two hours in a canoe, then unloading, and then two, two and a half hours in a truck, and now we're back at main camp. So, maybe I'll we'll take a shower. All my clothes are wet except the ones that I'm wearing. I saved these, so I have one dry pair. Uh, everything stinks because it's so wet <laughs> um, inside of my tent. Not good. But we're back at main camp, so I took a shower. The guys picked up my stuff and they're going to wash it for me and hopefully tomorrow at some point I'll have some dry clothes that uh, don't stink. But uh, Jonathan says we're going to hunt from this camp tomorrow at least and he's pretty confident that we'll, we'll turn up something. We're going to check a bunch of salines and see if anything's been in there. So. We'll see how it goes, but I'm optimistic. Still got another eight days here. While driving between Salt Lakes one day, it was very wet and we weren't seeing much much sign at the salt lakes. Driving down the road, there was a cob standing in the middle of the dirt road. He took off into the tall savanna grass. The grass is about eight feet tall, so there was no point in trying to go after him. However, after we checked the salt lakes, we determined that there wasn't anything we could really go after. So the guys decided to take a walk down to one of the one of the savannas and see if there was anything potentially out there. When we got out there, 
there was a cab. So I snuck about 50 yards to a tree and upon doing so, the cab stood up. I rested against the tree, I put my crosshairs on him, took a deep breath. Having shot the cab on day six, day seven was spent continuing to look for tracks. We drove around to 15 different salt licks. We could not find any. Day eight, we woke up and it was raining. So we decided to sit in a machan. While sitting in the machan, we heard some movement. We were getting excited, hoping that a Sitatunga was gonna walk out of the brush. It wasn't a Sitatunga. We saw four red river hogs. Unfortunately, there was no male in the group. So we got to watch these beautiful animals as they walked around and quickly disappeared into the brush. On day nine, we were gonna leave at 6.30 to go check the salt licks, however, so this morning, the guys went down and checked one of the salt legs that's closest to camp. They found uh, a big one and a small one had been there together uh, last night. So we're here now and we're gonna try and chase these bongo. Hopefully the two split up or uh, possibly, hopefully the big one stops and we can get in close uh, right now. The guys are just looking for an exit out of the saline here. So uh, we wait until, until they find a good exit. Once they find the exit, the trackers start following the tracks. It seems that the tracks we were on were smaller than we thought. Maybe just due to the mud, you know, the animals shifting around a little bit. Sometimes it makes the tracks look a little bit bigger. So that might have been it. We did get on another set of tracks. Uh, it was two bulls together, one big one, one younger one. We followed them for quite a long time, I think maybe three or four hours, and eventually they caught up with uh, a herd, so we had to back off. Uh, tracking was pretty slow. They went through some dry forest and did not make it easy for the guys. So, still got more days to hunt. We'll give her a shot tomorrow, and. Hopefully things work out. This morning I woke up, it was raining. I said it was a light rain, but I was still a little, a little worried. And um, we went out and they checked all 15 salt licks, not a single bongo track. It's a very depressing morning. Came back here, ate lunch, and then uh, we just went out for a diker hunt. And we sat, called twice, and didn't see any dikers. And then as we were walking, we saw there were some bongo tracks a couple days old. And then we walked a little bit further and you could see some leaves that had been eaten by a bongo and a small tree that was broken by a bongo. And then a little bit further, we actually jumped a bongo and we didn't see it, but we saw the tracks and we, they're pretty confident that it's, uh, that it's the big one they've been looking for and visits the Salt Lake here near camp. So it's good news. We backed out of there tomorrow morning. First light, we're gonna get the dogs and go right back there. We started following the bongo tracks from last night. This morning about 6.30. It's 
7.30 right now. We're just waiting because one of the dogs got lost in the woods. He was chasing some monkeys or something. But we, we think the, uh, or they think the bongo kind of wandered back and forth through the woods here, so... Hopefully we'll be on him soon. We have a very bad luck. <laughs> There's no way to show it, the bongo. On day 11 of 12, we were eating our breakfast. Franck and Vivian went down to check the salt lick closest to camp. There was no sign there. So we drove to the next salt lick. There was no fresh sign. It had rained through the night, so everything was wet. When we went to the third salt lick, there were tracks there. We decided we were going to take it, if we had the chance. So we got on the trail and started following. It wasn't long before we caught up to him. I'm talking. No, I don't. I'm <laughs> no, it's good. It's not a big, big one, but it's a nice coffee. It's a nice coffee. And it's a nice hand. Huh? Yeah. If we stop again, uh, I see it's not a big one, but it's not too bad. Huh? It's a nice coffee. <laughs>
After connecting on my bongo, we decided that that evening we'd go out and try and call Diker. The local guys pinch their nose and make this nasally sound. If there's one in the area, they come running at you full speed. A Diker came running in. This time it was a Peters Diker. He busted through the brush at about 10 yards from me and I took a shot. After a very successful day 11, we woke up day 12 to find it raining. There wasn't much point in going out, but the guys took me out anyways. We sat in a machan and didn't see anything. Later that evening, they took me on a diker hunt. I could tell they didn't expect to see anything. That night, I would pack my stuff up and get ready for the trip out. trip back to Yaoundé took about eight and a half hours. The wet ground had created much more mud than we saw on the way in, so cars were stuck and semis were stuck all over as well. 